And welcome to Power Rankings, presented by Energizer. Here we Live are. Live from the Chris Wessling Podcast Studio. I'm Dan Hansis, joined by Colleen Wolf. Hello, friend. Hey, buddy. What's up? How are you? That theme song, this is, we've been doing the show now for about two months, um, and it's, I don't know, it's a little heavy-handed for what we're trying to accomplish Feels here. Feels very aggressive and earnest. Is it? A little you bit. You agree. We're yeah. on the same page. Mm -hmm. Hey, Shawnee Kelly, um... I gave you an – that's Sean Kelly, our audio producer. Yeah. What's up? How are you? How are we doing? Wearing a Phillies hat. Yeah. Go, hey. go, Phils. He's that's ready. That's right. One and one. I gave you an important job. Uh, we want better theme music yeah. for the show, so um, I left it up to your discretion. So you will get buried if these are bad. All right. But let's hear a couple options as replacement themes for the Power Rangers All right. Podcast. Well, here is one. Let's get this going. Ooh. What? Little little trap here right off the top. Kind of your thing. I it was unexpected. I thought that we Same. were going into like a jaunty space odyssey, and yeah. then we got a little beat dropped on us. That was fun. All right, I'm gonna give that personally about a six out of six and a half out of ten. Okay. Is that where you come down on that? Let's go to another one. Let's hear. All right, let's try this one. <laughs> <laughs> this is absurd. No. This is like uh, <laughs> not like Michael Jackson Dangerous Era. It's like Corey Feldman's band. We're going to lose this one. Let's okay. go yeah. to the next. Well, you know, they're not all dubs. It feels like some weird futuristic bar cocktail lounge music. Okay. This one goes hard. Kind of goes hard. Yeah, this is not bad. What do you think? Yeah? I, I, I feel like I might like the first one still better than okay. this, but this is, I guess, second. All right. Give me one more. Oh, I kind of love this. <laughs> This is more techno, like we're in the flat. Yeah. Is this the new theme song of our podcast? <laughs> I think it might have to be. All right. Okay, let's, let's we're going to try. We're going to roll with this one let's next lock week. It in. All right, All right, lock great. it in for now. Let's lock it in. <laughs> uh, I have locked it in. Thank you for that, Sean. Appreciate you. Um, and go Phillies. Not because I like or care about the Phillies. I hate the Astros. Exactly. And so now the Phillies have to be America's team. But we're talking about the NFL, the National Football League, and the power rankings, which you check out on NFL.com. And we're going to talk about it right here. Let's start with the first quadrant. Now that we have the theme music, mm -hmm. God, hit me with the bed. Hit me with that theme underneath when we talk about this. <laughs> the top eight. Uh, we have the Bills, the Eagles, the Chiefs, the Cowboys. Play it, Sean Kelly. I want to hear it. There it is. All this, all the same. In this fact, so the dumb. the Bills, Eagles, and Chiefs have been one, two, and three in that order for four straight weeks now. Then it changes. Change in the back half. The Niners up seven spots after Christian McCaffrey has a historic game um, to number five. You have the Vikings up one spot with only one loss at number six. The Ravens up one to seven and just traded for a big time player in Roquan Smith and the Titans up one spot to eight. They have not lost in a long time. Where do you want to start here, Connie? Okay, so I do, I love that there is some consistency now with the, the top three, definitely the top four. But I feel like five is sort of where it starts to get a little tricky. And to have the Viking or the Niners make such a huge jump, I agree with you. I mean, seven spots up. They looked so good with Christian McCaffrey. And hopefully when Debo is back, the two of them together, like, really unlock the offense. But I kind of where I have a little bit of a difference of opinion is at six with the Vikings because I'm just still not totally sure who they are, what they are, if they are great, because it's just, it seems so hard. It's always stressful. All of these games, it's never easy. Any of these wins, they, they had to hold on again to beat the Cardinals. And the Vikings are definitely going to win this division. And I think they're going to end up with a high seed in the NFC. But I just, I think right now that I would probably put the Vikings ahead, or the, uh, the Ravens ahead of them. So on November 1st, Connie. Mm-hmm. We're going to say that the Vikings will definitely win the NFC North. So we're that out on the Packers. And I'm not saying even disagree, but isn't that kind of crazy? But it is. the fact is they really have opened up a huge lead in that division. And, yes, I'm with you. I mean, you can – if you're a Packers fan, you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, a, a Vikings fan, you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Pump the brakes. <laughs> wow, we are 6-1. and one. Why are we 7th and not moving? It's because, you know – 
I give you credit. You're taking care of business. But I also, I, I am like not a fan of that Cardinals team on any level. No. And you watch that game in Minneapolis on Sunday. And I counted and wrote about this in the power rankings, five separate situations where the Cardinals just shot themselves in the foot with sloppy play. That game was there for the taking. Mm-hmm. So you credit the Vikings for finding ways to win. That was the opposite of what they were uh, last year. And, you know, let's cycle back to the 49ers, which, by the way, it's a power move. It, oh. Presented by Energize, Energizer. Up seven spots. They've been kind of a tough one, um, Connie, to figure out this season. And, you know, I've talked about this. I don't like – moving up teams like at this level, seven spots or, or in that range this late in the season. But I kind of struggle with finding where to place them. But watching what they did, the way they kind of beat down on the Rams at Levi's South, as I call the stadium across the sidewalk, Ooh. that was that was a show of power. And again, a team without Debo Samuel dominating the Rams. I know the Seahawks are ahead in the division, but this is my pick to come out of the West on top. I just love how they look on offense with Christian McCaffrey. And he clearly went wild in this game with the hat trick. But the fact that they don't have Debo out there and they still are able to look this way. Brandon Ayuk, he really stepped up in this game. Six for 81 and a touchdown. And then George Kittle, he's not going to show up in the stat sheet, but like he threw some incredible blocks for Christian McCaffrey to make this work. So their schedule, when I just look ahead, obviously they're on the bye now, but they don't have an extremely tough opponent. Like it's pretty manageable and they're going to get key players back from injury, especially on defense. So they're three and zero in the division. I just think they're set up really well right now. I, I agree with you. And, there is the the Jimmy G side of things. Like, do I trust Jimmy G? Not entirely, but I do trust if Chris McCaffrey could stay healthy. This is not going to well. He's not going to score three touchdowns in three different ways every week. But this is going to be yet another layer to this offense that's going to be hell for the opposition because you could you could get after Garoppolo for a lot of things, but if you pr- give him protection and put him in a positive scheme. He will find ways to move the ball on offense, and they just have so many options. It's like, it's crazy to me. It was a little crazy at the time, Connie, when the trade went down for CMC, people getting on it, and a lot of that goes back to analytics and studies of the running back position. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, Wait, is, you're, are you uh, no, no, dismissing no, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. analytics? No, 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 I wouldn't do that. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, are you no, a Vikings no, no. fan now? Don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> um, but it's crazy to me like how much pushback there was just because people wanted to say, hey, you don't value running backs. He's not just any other running back. He is, when healthy uh, and at his best, one of the most dynamic running backs of the last, like, 10, 15 years. You, that's the type of guy you do give up extra assets for, and you saw in that game how it could pay off. Yeah, and it also seems like an indictment on the Panthers for not utilizing him the way that they should. And they don't have a lot of the pieces to make it work, but this is a perfect landing spot for him. Just imagine Christian McCaffrey going from the Panthers to the 49ers, like in Cal- out California, on a good team. And, Dan, don't forget that at the beginning of the season, you had the Niners, what, number three? Mm-hmm. So this is not too far off from that. I mean, it's a whole different world because a lot of that was based around Trey Lance, of course, and that quickly disappeared. But, uh, yeah, it made sense also, by the way, for the Panthers to do what they did because you could be a great running back. If you're on a team with nothing around it, right. you might as well move move your guy. And they did. Now, you said the Ravens, at which I, I have them at seven. Um, you have We're splitting hairs at this point. Yeah, I, you have an issue with them not being ahead of the, of the Vikings. Vikings. I and maybe this is just because I was so locked in on Thursday watching them on TNF, but sure, if I was just watching the first half of that game against Tampa Bay, I'd be like I don't I don't know what the Ravens are doing. Why are they passing the ball? Why are they not even trying to run the ball? It was so weird. Lamar Jackson had career highs in completions and pass attempts in the first half. It was just all so out of character, but then they went back to what they do well. Like just don't overthink it at all. And it just worked so well. You had everybody kind of got a hand in the running game, even wide receiver Devin Duvernay, Justice Hill, I mean, Kenyon Drake. This was, I think, a really good game for them in coming back, showing how how they're really they're built to succeed and how they can succeed. And then they traded for Roquan too. Plus, time is on their side. I just think that 
they should be trending up because the schedule really breaks right for the injuries that they have right now with Mark Andrews, which it's not supposed to be serious, but Mark mm-hmm. Andrews and Rashad Bateman, apparently they're not serious. Uh, that's what Harbaugh said. But their next game, I mean, they got Monday night football after Thursday night football last week, and then they have a bye. So it's one game in like 23 days. Sets up well. I mean, I cycling back real quick before we move to the second quadrant, are you – you got an issue with me not having the Eagles number one? Listen, you, uh, you'll you learn. You'll learn at some point. Because see, the reason I thought of it was you mentioned anyone having an easy schedule, and it's crazy. I know. Philadelphia's schedule this but season. But y- I was actually thinking about this the other day. I don't like how soft the schedule is oh because goodness. it just makes me think and makes me worry that the team is going to get complacent because they just keep crushing opponents. Listen, there's only three truly great teams. Uh, they're one of them, and they don't have the Chiefs or Bills on their schedule. But they, I looked at what's coming up here. Yeah. They don't have – they won't be an underdog in any game in the regular season. Mm-mm. It's it's wild. But I did notice that like on some of the other power rankings out there, not the real ones, because this is the authority. Are we and even acknowledging that they exist? I, I was kind of on the fence on that. I don't really like to, but yeah. sometimes I just dabble. Sometimes I just like to see what's what's going on right. out there. And I did notice quite a few put the Eagles at one. Right. And then that's when I that's when I clicked off because I was like, well, I don't know. I don't know what's going on out here. <laughs> Number nine, the Seattle Seahawks up six spots. What? How about that? Into the top ten for the first time this year. Number ten, the Bungles, who look terrible on Halloween night, dropped five spots to ten. Uh, Giants at 11, down five spots after a loss to the Seahawks. Uh, that's a drop. We'll get into it. The, uh, the Dolphins up two spots. The Pats up four spots. My Jets after flopping. Uh, against New England at home, down four spots. So look at that. The AFC East, 12, 13, 14. And the Bills, of course, have mm. won. The Rams down four spots. The Chargers stay on their bye at 16. Thoughts here, Connie? The Giants really come flying down. Well, we can get to them in a second. I kind of want to start at the top with the Seahawks, now in the top 10. And obviously the fact that they beat the Giants. And Geno Smith, I loved what he said, that this game is for Ben McAdoo and Jerry <laughs> Reese. <laughs> they believed in me. This is just still just the beginning. I think we're going to see so much more entertainment uh, via Geno talking as his confidence gets higher and higher. <laughs> yes. He was a man that never lacked confidence when he wasn't doing anything in the league. Now, uh, as Michael Jordan said, the roof is the ceiling. It's, it, that is true. What do you say? The ceiling is the roof. I can't remember. I don't know either. One of those. I'm botching his botched quote. That's good. That's yeah. good. But look, the Seahawks, they take out the Giants, and now I think people are really noticing. Uh, I needed that. I needed this to kind of buy in a little bit on Seattle. I had, They've been making a slow rise up the power rankings uh, for weeks now, and this was the game where it was like, okay, the defense has now played well for three straight weeks. They were really good and active in this game. That the home, you know, home field advantage is a thing that doesn't feel like it's as big a deal as it used to be for whatever reason. But not in Seattle when the team has got the t- the fan base excited. That was a very difficult environment, I thought, for the Giants and their offense, who did nothing. And then Geno leading an offense that just continues to to be smart and productive. I think Pete Carroll has done an awesome job there. So. Um, Good on Seattle. Yeah, and the offense rebounded from a messy start. Tyler Lockett, those two mistakes, it's just so rare to see him make them. And so he made up for it, obviously, with the go-ahead touchdown. But the defense just completely neutralizing Saquon Barkley after Barkley was just a machine. Yeah, and let's check out that I mentioned the Seattle Rise. Yes. Um, They started out way down uh, in week four at 28. And remember, this is a very strange season. So all you need to do is get a little bit hot, and you will go far Mm -hmm. fast. So they go from 28 to 23, a dip down to 24 after a loss, up to 20, up to 15, and now up to 9. Wow. Uh, So they are on a journey upward. I'm kind of into them. Um, Let's talk about the Giants since they obviously – could not hang in the fourth quarter. The Giants had won so many games um, close and late that I can't really get on them uh, too hard because it's hard to win every week like that. But for those of us that have had a little bit of a doubt 
that this team is for real. That game, you know, it's it was what it was. It wasn't a disgraceful effort by any stretch, Mm-mm. but I worry about the offense's ability to score points when the competition is better, and that was a sign there that it might not be there yet. Well, that's – the, the offense, obviously, was the biggest problem in this game. And the fact that Saquon Barkley averaged just 2.7 yards per carry. I mean, Daniel Jones, he just n- nothing really worked for them. The only touchdown that they had was a Dory Jackson because of the, the fumble. So I think that this team, they have – a lot of people were wondering how real they were at 6-1. and one, But only one loss to 6-2, and two, and they get dropped, what, five spots? I don't know. Maybe that's a little tough on them. Maybe you could say that, but I also felt number six was a little high, but they kept on winning and and in a league with so many teams that are the are kind of in the same boat in the middle class. It was it was I could I had no choice but to keep on lifting them up. This feels a little safer for them where they should be. Yeah, Um, we we can get to the Bengals another week. I do want to talk about the AFC East a little bit before we uh, head to break, Connie, because I got the Dolphins up to 12. Yes, I got the Patriots at 13. Um, and I like the trajectory of both these teams, if I'm a fan of these teams, because Miami, it's Miami. Their <laughs> schedule is um, very interesting. Their journey. Can we can we take a look at what where Miami's been um, this year? Uh, and it all connects, obviously, to Tua, I think, which is something that's notable. They were up to number three after an undefeated start in week four. Tua gets injured that Thursday night in Cincinnati. They go from 3 to 10 to 18 to 23. I think they were on their seventh string quarterback by that point. Mm -hmm. Tua gets healthy up to 14, up to 12 in the power rankings. And it's undeniable, Connie, uh, the yardage this team is putting up week after week. Oh, my gosh. I had been calling for it on ATN, um, but I need more points. And then what do they do? They they dig out of a big hole against Detroit, and they show that they could st- stack points, not just yards. 476 total yards for the Miami offense. Tua looked so good. He was so efficient. 382 passing yards. He had the three touchdowns. I mean, having Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell is just helping him so much. They each went over 100 receiving yards. It's just the trust. You can see the chemistry between Tua and all of these players, and everything is finally looking in rhythm. And the fact that they converted 8 of 12 third downs, they were perfect on fourth down, just everything looked the way it should. And it's funny because I think – that this Dolphins team for a while, the past few years, it was the defense that was really helping them win games. And now everything is sort of switched and it's the offense that's really holding them up. So I have some questions with the defense, especially with the secondary. They have, they're dealing with a lot of injuries right now. So do they need to change things around in terms of maybe don't blitz as much to help out on the back end and not expose some of these guys? But overall, they look really good. And then the Patriots, I still think they have a quarterback issue. I'm not yeah. a Mac Jones guy. I don't I don't see it. I don't know if Belichick is handling the position the, the right way either. Uh, but all the other stuff is there. The way they really put the clamps on Zach Wilson and, and made him look bad in that game shows that this defense can continue to get better and progress as the season goes along. The running game is kind of under the radar. Really good. With two very good running backs in Stevenson in Harris and their special teams. This is why the Patriots are different, Connie, and why it was so annoying to see and hear so many people think they were going to be overmatched on their coaching staff of all places heading into the season. They destroyed the Jets in special teams, both from field goal kicking Mm -hmm. to punting to coverage. And those things make a difference when you have a, a team that's not maybe high in the talent realm. They do everything else well. Quarterback's an issue, but Number 13 is a good spot for them, I think. Yeah, Mac Jones just still does not look right after coming back from that high ankle sprain. And it could have been worse. Like, I mean, if you when you watch this game, for anyone who hasn't, he should have had a pick six. Don't, we don't need to talk about this, Connie. Should we not? It's uh, ju- it's there just... was a would-be interception that was no, dropped. Just, just talking. Um, a Jet fan doesn't need to know <laughs> that it was 17-3 at the end of the second quarter, if not for a ticky-tack roughing the passer call it on Jonathan great. Franklin Myers. Not great. That could have changed the whole season for both teams. I'm trying to move on from it, but then my co-host on Power Rankings decides we need to touch on it. Well, that's our job. We're just – I'm being thorough, and I think it's a service. You know what? The Eagles are going to be 12 next week. Wow. No, I because will have they're my winning revenge. this week. They won't let you. They won't let you do it. But um, 
yeah, I don't know. It, Mac Jones, the offensive line didn't help him out. I mean, look, he got sacked six times. That was nice for the Jets. <laughs> You're a <laughs> there jerk. You go. <laughs> um, all right, let's uh, take a break, and when we get back, we will dig into the second half of the power rankings. Stay right there. All right, welcome back to Power Rankings Podcast, uh, presented by Energizer. Here is the third quadrant, number set. Actually, Shawnee, how about the first uh, nomination that you pulled from the Yeah, let's give that another go. Library. It's that like, frisbee like flying it. in the air that I like. It's not bad. It's Saturn, number 17, the Saints up four spots. How about that? The Falcons up four as well after a oh boy. very... Uh, wild win over the Panthers. The Packers, you know, get beat up by the Bills, but don't get embarrassed. So just set them at 19. The Bucks down two spots after another disappointing showing at home to 20. The Browns up four spots after spanking the Bengals on Halloween night. The Cardinals down two um, after another loss where they look sloppy as hell. The Raiders down 10. Oh. And we're going to get to that because I want to talk about that. Whenever you see that, that means I messed up to 23 and the bears down one to 24 where we start here okay let's start in the nfc south let's do the saints first because they're the highest and this was the most complete game of the season for them like they finally started to put together with offense defense all of it alvin Kamara, he finally looked right he looked like himself like this guy is the guy that i remember he scored his first second and third touchdowns of the season in this game you know there's been a lot of speculation and thought process about who should play quarterback for the Saints. Uh, but how about just play the guy, which they're doing now, that gives the ball to Alvin Kamara because that's one thing that Jameis Winston never did on a consistent basis. That mm-hmm. gets me mad. Gets me mad. So I know. Mad. Okay. Oh, you all right? Not you okay really. there? No, actually, it doesn't really get me mad. But, <laughs> I mean, it just makes sense. He's such a great dynamic player with a nose for the end zone like nobody else in the league. Put it in his hands. Um, I'm with you. The Saints are a team they're – they're interesting to me because they've looked really bad this year yeah. at times, and they're still in a deep hole, um, even with the win. Uh, but there's there are pieces here where you can look at them, and you don't have to squint too hard to see a team that can make a, a run here. Um, three and five is going to make it tougher, but when they have both sides humming and Andy Dalton isn't forcing it like he mm-hmm. did the previous week uh, when he had the double pick six in the second quarter – I think in this landscape, they can absolutely get to about nine wins, and that will get you in the dance. Well, especially in the in the division that they're in. The division is so bad right now with the Bucks struggling at everything, pretty much. And then the Falcons and the Panthers. I mean, the, I was just looking at the rankings. That, that game was so close, and the Panthers are down at 29, and they could have beat the Falcons, who are up at 18. That's just how the season is going. Right. It's so strange. But the Saints overall, I think that hopefully they can continue this now because the defense, the pass rush, was getting to Derek Carr the entire game. It just, when they get Jarvis Landry and Michael Thomas back, I think that they'll be able to go on a run. Um, yes, I'm with you on that. And I think when you look at uh, the Falcons, like we said, they're another one. They can hang with almost any team. They're not going to hang against the big boys, uh, mm-hmm. more than likely. Uh, but they will uh, put up a fight and and steal some games. They had that game won, and then they had a coverage bust in the secondary that should have led to them losing. And then the kicker, Pinheiro, lets them mm-hmm. off the hook, and, the, and they get the W. So at 18, they, they are a team that's, we've said it before, that they're frisky. They're a frisky team. Uh, not a good team, but it was really good to see Marcus Mariota throw the ball, which um, Arthur Smith hasn't been down to let him do uh, much of this season. Yeah, and you look at the wins that they do have. They beat the Seahawks, your number nine team. They beat the Niners, your number five team. There are a lot of games this season that they probably should have run uh, won. They also have a strong run game, and I think that, you know, when you when they put it all together, the fact that they gave up the uh, that the Hail Mary was a bad look for them. Uh, I mean, it wasn't even a Hail Mary. It was just like, hey, <laughs> this guy's going deep. All we need to do is 
listen, this isn't we're not George Halas and Bill Belichick here, but we could say strategically, Connie, that you need to make sure the guy doesn't run past you in that situation. And they just kind of played it poorly, but they have a lot of injuries mm-hmm. on defense. But on the injury front, on the positive side, Cordero Patterson is coming back uh, soon from IR. Yep. So that adds an important piece to their offense. All right, so now my Mia Culpa on the on the Raiders. Okay. All right. When you see a team drop like that mm. at this stage of the season, old Zeuser done did wrong. I did. I kind of was hanging with the Raiders even though they were struggling to win games because they had lost so many close games. And I thought they would get hot, and they beat the Texans last week, and it should have been a little bit of a red flag for me that it wasn't as easy as it maybe should have been against the worst team in football. Right. And then to go to New Orleans, and we just finished saying that New Orleans is sneaky spicy, and uh, so it's not a disgrace to lose to the Saints on the road, but to no-show in the game Ooh. for your head coach, your first-year head coach, to be called into the owner's um, office for the second time in a month uh, before you do your post-game presser and basically say, I, I blew this, this is on me, the vibes are bad, and I should not have hung so tight with the Raiders. I should have had them lower, so I got to take the L. Were you stressed out at all watching this game? No, I wasn't watching the game. I just want to know how deep you are into the power rankings. No, no. I as the you know the Sunday the way it lays out, we all have different games we watch. That wasn't one of my games. But then when I heard that you know they're still getting shut out, oh now it's a blowout. It's like what? Yeah. Oh, you. I was like, oh, Derek Carr is going to be the quarterback of the Jets next year. Oh, yeah, this makes sense. I was watching this game in the <laughs> Oakland airport, and I can tell you that the Raiders fans were not happy, uh, and they shouldn't be happy. But Devontae no. Adams having one catch for three yards, that's get, not going to do it. What are you doing? It gets me so mad that the Packers need Devontae Adams so much, and he's not there, and then he's on the Raiders, and they're not even giving him the ball. So what are – we do in credit to the Saints again. Uh, but please, guys, you can't get shut out in that spot. You're trying to dig out of a hole. Let's move to Quadrant 4. Shawnee, hit us with another one. Hit us with one of your other offerings. Is this like a country type Yeah, this is, this is rough. This was the hidden sixth one that I had. <laughs> this is kind of like a... If, Billy Ray, Cyrus, and, and Miley are like, oh, we're going to do a crossover song together. Or it's almost like a bad primetime intro. <laughs> <laughs> like, waiting all day. Yeah, we don't need this one, uh, Shawnee. But uh, thank you uh, for your efforts. 25, the Commanders up three spots. Broncos up one spot to 26. Steelers down three to 27. And, and a trade to discuss uh, in a moment. Colts down two to 28. They stink. The Panthers up one to 29, Jags down one to 30, and the Lions and Texans round out uh, the 32 of them. Uh, Chase Claypool is headed to the Bears uh, from Pittsburgh. So, you know, that's a that's a move for the Steelers that you kind of saw coming. I think Chase Claypool is as talented as he is. Uh, maybe wasn't always in the good graces of the organization. They weren't mm-hmm. always in love with uh, some of the ways he went about his business. But he's super talented. And um, on the Bears side, like, good. I mean, you, it's been a bummer of a week where you trade away your two defensive veterans that are highly decorated. Uh, giving Justin Fields another piece, I kind of like that combo fields and Claypool if Claypool has his head on straight yeah hopefully they can find a good connection together fields and Claypool but this made sense for the Steelers Claypool his name has just been floating around in a lot of different trade rumors but Kenny Pickett he just kind of had that immediate chemistry with George Pickens and so right. that just worked better for them but and not this a is lot what the Steelers do like right. they they churn through receivers they identify guys in the draft that others overlook they develop them and then they keep things moving the line moving so George Pickens I believe Connie is going to get a lot a lot more targets now that they've thinned out the group a little bit he's excellent but the Steelers offense is like broken in so many different ways it, ev- everything everything needs help the run game I mean it's just not there at all when you look at the offensive line that is a disaster Kenny Pickett's still missing guys um, Pickett got sacked six times like there are just so many things that they need I to know, fix but you know 
What? We don't all get to be the Eagles and never play a tough opponent. <laughs> uh, Pittsburgh had to play the Eagles, and it's just not its not fair. In, in general, if you look at Pittsburgh's schedule since Pickett took over um, in week four, I believe it was, it's not been easy. It's been a really difficult stretch of games. I'd like to see him develop in a low-pressure environment against some of these soggy middle uh, earth teams of the NFL, which there are about 23 or so. Um, and I think that's what will be good for the season. It, for Mike Tomlin, it's going to be like, all right, I'm, we're not going to go 500 or better this year. It's going to be the first time ever. But at the same time, now you can really start to focus on developing your first round pick and and maybe getting Chase Claypool out of the building helps. I don't know. We don't know all the story behind that trade yet. But Okay, so I'll ask you this. Who yeah. has a brighter future, the Steelers or the team that you have ranked behind them, the Colts? Oh, I mean, oh, so much d- depends on, of course, whether uh, Pickett can play the guitar with his right. pick. Um, but <laughs> That's where you went. Uh, I good. would say them just because they at least have a plan. They're gonna, they have playmakers on both sides of the ball. They have T.J. Watt, um, mm-hmm. obviously. Um, and they have great infrastructure with Mike Tomlin. I, I just trust the Steelers uh, more than the Colts. I think just like I'm fall, I fell on the sword and took a, a hard L on the Raiders. I will now say to you, Connie, who spent all summer Ugh, throwing flowers no. at the feet of Matt Ryan and why hasn't this worked? Your boy Frank Reich, um, take the L on that one. You know, it's just. <sighs> It makes me so sad, and I truly, I believed in them, and I've learned in the past to not buy in on teams too early, like I was doing it every single season with the Chargers, and I learned with the Chargers this season. Okay. Learning but is important. I was just blindsided by the Colts, the way that they started this season, and now they're firing offensive coordinators. Marcus Brady's out. I mean, there's a lot of blame to go around and fixing and changing the quarterback. I mean, I don't know. That's not going to change the offensive line, which is the main problem. And it and it was the main problem going into the season, I think, too. So I should have known. I should have seen it. But uh, I you're not alone. I think a lot of us thought the Colts would be at least competitive. It just hasn't turned out that way. And I think, yeah, the offensive line struggles and Jonathan Taylor, who was all world last year, just being a guy this year, it's pretty crazy. There's nowhere for him to run. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. (laughs) Um, Just like the Detroit Lions. This is a bummer of a quad. Can Can I say it with the Lions? Because you and I have a very, we have a relationship. We do. Um, uh, with the Lions, we did the Hard Knocks podcast, and it was all good vibes. It, it was so, it was so much grit. And the vibes are not good. And he and Dan Campbell now. Remember all the talk we did, Connie, about what a great coaching staff it was and how close they are. Well, they just fired the defensive backs coach, and then they went and they traded their former first round pick, Tyler Hawkinson, uh, to the Vikings. TJ. Hi, TJ. Uh, TJ Hawkinson to the Vikings, and it's just like. Oh man, we had the vibes. No bueno. I know. Detroit. And you know, I blame Eminem. Well, maybe that's something we need to investigate. Everything changed when he appeared. <laughs> it's, it's true. I mean, the they grounds. were they were doing all sorts of stuff. There was juggling out there. There was juggling, Colleen. There was super super fun songs. I mean, it's just Remember, remember, you know, at home with the, Hotch- uh, the Hawkinsons, was it? Wait, no, the Hutchinsons. <laughs> Hutch. I know. This season. This season. Hutchinsons. This season is such a blur. Aiden Hutchinson. <laughs> that was a big storyline. Hanging story with line. Hutch. Remember no, hanging with Hutch? Hanging with Hutch. But I also can't get out of my head the scene when and why <laughs> is his name escaping me? The main character who was like the <laughs> Rodrigo. <laughs> Um, when Rodrigo went to the cowboy store to get all yeah. fit, fitted out and everything the good was old cool. Days. Yeah, I know. It's sad. It Does sucks, that feel like it really. happened like seven years ago? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I feel like this, I say it every year that the season is flying by, but I, you know what? I would like a halftime, just a general, like every, we go dark for one week. Everybody goes home. They get a day off. We talk about like, it's like the first half of the season and yeah. the second half of the season, but we really do give everyone off. We are, and we are really <laughs> heading toward a scenario. Uh, it's the beginning of November. In about two months, there might be a lot of like rap sheet reports about Dan Campbell's job security. Like, <sighs> I would have never 
predicted that. But there's still time, Lions. We're still time to clean it up, and they maybe you will. They were the highest will. scoring team through the first four weeks. It's the and defense. then all of a sudden it was like um, a total of six points in two games. What defense. happened? It's the defense. And, and the defense. And remember how much oh, Aaron Glenn, what a great leader of men. He's the defensive coordinator. I know. Is he next? He's oh, what a mess. In some trouble. What a mess. Connie. What a what a show it's been. We, I think, have maybe settled on a new theme song with the help of Sean Kelly. Uh, but we've definitely figured out the landscape of our mm-hmm. league uh, as should, week eight comes to an end. Should we ask listeners to submit any if they think theirs is better? Yes, yeah, submit some uh, uh, theme music potential. And uh, also s- tell me your own top ten, and maybe we'll mm. feature it on the show. Well, why not? Love Probably that. not, but maybe. Maybe. All right, until... Next Tuesday. I think you're heading to Germany. Oh, my God. I'm going to Germany on Saturday. <laughs> Wait, right. So I'm not going to be here next week. So it'll be, it will be uh, Steve Weish once again filling oh, in yeah. for Connie as uh, we'll chop up next week's Power Rankings. Until then, have a great week. You got the power. Later. Later.